Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's pray and then we'll start. Yeah. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, Master. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy, Father God. We, we thank you, Lord, for your mercies are new every morning, Lord. We thank you for your abundant grace that you lavish upon us, Lord Jesus. We, we bless your name. And even at this time, Father God, we, we commit today, Lord, all the classes, Lord, and this time into your mighty hands, Father God. We thank you that, Lord, you lead us, you guide us, you... Lord, Father God, take us, Lord, uh, deeper into your truth. Father God, we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, Lord. We thank you that uh, yeah, you're the one who leads us into all truth. And Master, we, we just pray, Father God, that your truth will liberate us. Your truth will, Lord, truly establish us in your word, Father God. And I just pray, Master, that we will be, Lord, uh, truly transformed from the inside out and, um, Lord, and made stronger, Lord, in our spirit, in the inner man. We thank you, Father God. We come at this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, last class, we, uh, we, I think ended with First um, Corinthians chapter fifteen, right? Like the end of uh, chapter fifteen. So um, let's I'll just put the notes there. So uh, Paul has been addressing a lot of different topics, and in in chapter fifteen, he's talking about uh, the resurrection from the dead. And uh, and we saw that how he, um, you know, addressed that in a very strong manner because there was some conversations happening in the or discussions in the church. Uh, some people were suggesting that uh, the um, resurrection has already passed, already uh, happened, and and uh, and so. Oh, and also there was a uh, sorry not already happened but it was it was not a reality right discussion uh, resurrection was not a reality so he's talking about that and um how illogical that is because um um you know a resurrection is something which is central starting from the resurrection of the lord um first fruits of the new creation and uh, you know we are the ones who would follow suit and all that so um and he talks about some you know, some belief that is there, uh, that was there in the Corinthian society, and, and even among the, you know, people who were coming to the Lord, that uh, they could have a water baptism done for uh, on behalf of someone who was dead, with the hope that that person is anyway, you know, going to rise and some kind of impact it will happen, and which was a wrong belief, uh, false belief, but uh, you know, people were doing it nevertheless, and so he's addressing that also. Um, and uh, and saying that you know how can uh, that happen? You no, know, that is also happening because there is some faith, there is some belief that there will be a resurrection from the dead. So, and he's giving all kinds of proof about uh, who were eyewitnesses, and he's talking about those five hundred, you know, who who are still remaining at that time, who are still alive, and he says, you know, all this proof is there that the Lord rose again, and therefore. You know, uh, we will also, right, um, and so on. So he finishes uh, First Corinthians uh, with that and with that exhortation. Um, so let's look at uh, chapter sixteen. So in chapter sixteen, it is uh, he, he also addresses a few other things. <clears throat> One is about giving to the needy and the church helping the needy, and. Uh, you know some instructions regarding that, and then he closes with uh, you know closing thoughts and um, and also greetings, right? Okay, so let's uh, read uh, one Corinthians sixteen, uh, first few verses. Okay, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also on the first day of the week. Let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Uh, and when I come, whomever you approve by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. But if it is fitting that I go also, they will go with me. Right. So Paul is um, here encouraging 
the the churches along with uh, you know uh, other churches where he had he had actually exhorted them encouraged them saying you know collection for the saints in jerusalem so it could be because of the famine that uh, the people experienced it could be because of other needs but there was this collection that he was uh, uh, he was kind of instructing them um, in in so that they can collect it and take it and uh, yeah so they were also we know that the church also took care of the the women who were who were widowed and uh, who did not have any other means of support so the, the 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 body of believers they were doing that in terms of local i mean in terms of even daily food and all that right so we see um, the seven who were appointed for that and um, you know that is how that came about so there were some needs for the believers <clears throat> and which the other churches churches were kind of taking care and supporting that need right so um yeah so uh, what we notice here is that uh, the church was gathering he says that uh, on the first day of the week let each one uh, put something aside storing up as he may prosper um, that there be no collections also uh, when i come there be collections when i come right so uh, which means that um, on the first day of the week there seemed to be you know it, it was a collective thing he's exhorting the church that you put aside some money and so in the gathering they were actually putting aside some amount of money towards this right so which we learn a few things here that um, they had actually they were gathering <clears throat> on sunday or the first day of the week and uh, they had significantly changed from gathering on the sabbath and on the sabbath as they would um, observe the sabbath and so on so they had they were meeting uh, on the first day of the week okay so this is something that we uh, say so were bringing their contribution and uh, they were worshiping the lord with their tithes offering maybe and um, but we see that yes uh, paul is addressing that even as you gather you put away some amount of money towards this towards the uh, helping the saints right he also gives some instructions there saying that uh, if you see uh, yeah verse verse 3 he says when when i come whomever you approve by your letters right i will send so it's a administrative thing in ministry comes with a lot of wisdom so he's saying, he's saying that whomever you trust and whomever you approve i will send right and but if it's fitting that i should go if it is appropriate that i should go i will also go right so he's saying that it's not like you give me the money and then you know you're thinking you know what is paul doing with this money but he's saying you know if you approve whomever you approve we'll give it through that person uh, for this need the need is real and uh, it's good that we take care of that need uh, and so uh, to we are going to ensure that you know that that need is taken care of so if you feel that you can trust someone with this particular responsibility you do that right so is really handling these things very well uh, and in a wise manner okay let's look at verses 5 onwards okay so verse 5 now i will come to you when i pass through macedonia for i am passing through macedonia and it may be that i will remain or even spend the winter with you that you may send me on my journey wherever i go for I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you if the Lord permits. Uh, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door is open to me, and there are many adversaries. And if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he does the work of the Lord, as I also do. Therefore, let no one despise him, but send him on his journey in peace, that he may come to me, for I am waiting for him with the brethren. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to come to you with the brethren, but he was quite unwilling to come at this time. However, he will come when he has a convenient time. So, so Paul is, uh, you know, here he is addressing some, again, further some administrative things and also some things to do with the church and so on with this journey. Right? So he's saying that um, we know that he was writing these letters uh, or the first Corinthians 
uh, was written from Ephesus. The letter to the first letter to Corinthians was written from Ephesus, where Chloe uh, and others who came and who met and shared all these concerns. So he is, you know, addressing that. He's written to them. So he's saying that he will, you know, spend that time there uh, until Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, which is the fiftieth day after the Feast of the Passover. Right. So he will stay there, and then he also mentions that a great and effective door has opened to me. Right? Before that, we see that uh, you know he's making all these plans, and he's saying, you know, I hope to stay with you. I hope to spend some time with you, and obviously it's a ministry and to edify the church. Um, but he also uses that. That phrase, you know, if the Lord permits, right? So he's all his plans are uh, committed to the Lord. All his plans are uh, also, you know, uh, in conjunction or in consultation with the Holy Spirit, right? He's asking the Lord. He is consulting with the Lord all his plans, and we see this, right, in the book of uh, when we when we read in, in Acts, we see that, um, you know, as much as they had the zeal. To go and share the gospel, but they were also very, very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. So in the book of Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit did not permit them. Right. The Holy Spirit did not permit them once, twice to go into that region, to go into Asia. And we see that um, well, when they saw that vision, when they had, when Paul had this dream, and the dream has a vision, and the man of Macedonia, you know, inviting him to come. And uh, and then uh, they, they are waiting, and then you know he shares with all of them, and then they 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 have that assurance. Yes, uh, this is off guard, and so we need to go, and then they go. So so that is why you know uh, we understand that yes, he is still leaning on God despite all his experience in ministry and travel and so on, still continuing to hear from God, uh, lean in uh, to the understanding that comes from God. Uh, when it comes to his ministry and and something as you know has uh, routine as his ministry travel plans as well, right? Uh, verse nine, he says, "For a great and effective door is open to me, and there are many adversaries." So something that we understand is that yes, when it comes to opportunities, when it comes to uh, you know these kind of things, uh, ministry work and openings that the Lord gives. Um, we see that just because that there is a, a, a you know a hindrance, right? just because there are enemies, or ad, you know in this word he uses the word adversaries, which means enemies to the gospel, just because there is opposition to the work, does not mean that it is not a door that is opened. No, it is not that it's not. That, that does not mean that there are no opportunities there, or it is not a divine orchestration or divine opportunity. Right? Yes, it is a divine opportunity. He says, a great door, a great opportunity is open to me. Right? And there are many adversaries. It is an effective door. It is a great opportunity, but there are adversaries also. So we understand that, yes, you know, when, when we want to do ministry and when there are opportunities to do ministry, there is the favor of God upon our lives. There is the anointing of God to carry out and, and carry out ministry, minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, there could be opposition and there will be opposition. There could be, you know, this kind of um, uh, pushback. But that does not mean that it is not God's will. Right? So we understand that if, you know, sometimes we make that conclusion, right? Then, if it's God's will, everything should be smooth, right? Everything will be smooth. There will be no difficulties, no challenges. Everything just, you know, just going uh, as per plan, etc. Well, the favor of God, the power of God enables us to do that. But we also see that we need to, you know, we will have to fight some giants. We will have to, you know, move some mountains along the way, and uh, we need to do that, uh, leaning on God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So, so we understand this as well. Then he goes on to talk about his uh, team, uh, the ministers who are there, and uh, particularly he's talking about Timothy, right? So he's saying, if Timothy comes, you see that he may be with you without fear. Okay, so Timothy is a young man, and he says, you know, when he comes there, you know, see that you 
you know you make him make his life comfortable you know don't look down upon him because he says that uh, you know he also does the work of the lord he does the work of the lord as i do the same kind of work that i do in preaching and teaching and establishing churches the same thing he does so you know see see to it that um he is with you without any fear right verse 11 he also says let no one despise him right and uh, this is the same instruction that he writes to paul i mean so he writes to timothy also and Timothy is in Ephesus. Uh, he writes to Timothy the same thing. You know, let no one look down on you. Let no one despise you. So despise meaning you know, let no one you know disrespect. Right. Uh, so uh, let them not. Uh, he, he's telling the church that you know, don't esteem him lightly. Don't dis disrespect from disrespect him. Right. But send him on his journey in peace. You know, from there after his visit. You send him on his journey, which means whatever is um, possible, whatever you need to do, uh, just facilitate that, right? So send him in peace so that he may come to you, and I'm also waiting for him with the brethren. So he's in Ephesus, and he's waiting. So, so this is something that, again, we learn and something that we can also apply in our lives when it comes to, you know, um, younger you know, team members or younger ministers of God who are associated with us, and and how we can facilitate uh, that their entry into ministry, and how we can ensure that they do it well, right? And we can just provide that um, that uh, kind of a uh, recommendation and that kind of assurance uh, for the people, um, right? With the people for on behalf of the younger ministers god right then he also talks about apollos and we see that okay he has been he's been telling apollos uh, to come and uh, to the church in corinth and minister there but but apollos has other plans and he's you know he says he's he was quite unwilling there but he will come uh, a later time right then he finishes with uh, some words of exhortation and um, uh, some greetings Right, like he always does in all his epistles. So, um, so he says, uh, so yeah, some, uh, you know, some words here, verse thirteen and fourteen. Uh, watch, stand fast in the faith, be strong, uh, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Okay, so watch meaning be awake, be vigilant, be alert, um, because you know you know that the enemy. Uh, goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So don't be passive, but be alert. Watch, stand fast in the faith. You know, meaning you need to stand established. And it's a, it's it's a typical military word, which means you know, don't be disorderly or don't um, retreat. Don't go back. Be determined. Um, keep close together. You know, typically when the, uh, the the Roman army, you know, would march forth into war and uh, they would you know i've seen some videos uh, they will watch they would they will have certain formations right and bunch together and with all the shields up and and so it it's it's like a armored vehicle you know moving together the shields are up and and they are they have also got their armor on and they're moving forward so he's saying you know literally you stand fast in the faith like that together alert uh, and uh, in information not breaking ranks right not because if in formation if they need to go um, with all the shields and everything that that means there has to be oneness that means that one cannot be disorderly right so he says you know do that and also be brave uh, be courageous be strong uh, keep yourself strong in the lord and uh, and let all that you do be done with love right he is of course, instructed them. He's talking about the gifts. He's instructed them in chapter 13 about the love of God and how one needs to minister the gifts. Well, the gifts are an expression of God, but one needs to minister the gifts in love because without the love of God, um, all this is going to be a waste. All this is going to be empty. So do that in love. So he's reminding them about 1 Corinthians 13 again. Right? Um, Verses 15 to 18, it says, uh, talking about other uh, believers or others who had helped him, others who were maybe on the team. It, it says, I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanus, that 
it is the first fruits of Achaia and how they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That you also, sorry, submit to such and to everyone who works and labors with us. So he's talking about others in the team and he's naming them the household of Stephanus, the family of Stephanus. Uh, and also he's saying, I'm glad for the coming of Stephanus. Um, when he says household, you know, it, uh, it's also about the church that was meeting in the house of Stephanus. You know, household meaning family, household meaning you know, that a church is called the household of faith and so on. So so the it could also be the church which is gathering uh, in the house of uh, Stephanus. So... Um, and and he's you know typically he's saying also uh, that it is the first fruits of Achaia and they have devoted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So uh, most likely it is not just Stephanus and his family, but it's the extended uh, family of faith, right? So uh, verse seventeen, I'm glad about the coming of Stephanus, Fortunatus, and Achaias. Um, for what was lacking on your part, they supplied. They re refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, <laughs> sorry. Acknowledge such men, right? So, uh, naming two others, and uh, probably uh, they were also uh, people who who came with may may have been servants of uh, Stephanus, may have been as you know uh, uh, people who came to the faith through his ministry, maybe. Um, so he's saying that, uh, excuse me, saying that you know when they come, you treat them well, also. Um, uh, and therefore acknowledge such men. You know, and it was 16, he says, you also submit to such. You know, many times the, uh, the Corinthian church has that had that problem or uh, at the time of the writing, they had that issue, right? I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Peter, and so on. So um, they had a problem with, uh, with uh, unity. They also had a problem with... Um, uh, you know, uh, they also had a problem with uh, uh, walking in submission, right? Because unity requires submission, and they were not submitted. So, um, so he's reminding them. You know, when Timothy comes, when Stephanus, Fortunatus, Achai, uh, you know, Achaicus, all these people are there. <clears throat> you know, submit to them, and also. Uh, he's saying acknowledge uh, such men. Acknowledge meaning you recognize, you accept their ministry, receive from them. Um, right? And then verse 19, the churches of Asia greet you. <clears throat> Achilla and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with a church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you, greet one another with a holy kiss. The salutation with my own hand, Paul. If anyone does not have the love of Christ, let him be accursed, O Lord come the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you my love with you all in christ jesus amen okay so he's talking about the churches in asia and also uh, you know in all the region where he uh, preached where he ministered then he mentions aquila and priscilla and so which means they are with him in ephesus and he says they greet you heartily in the lord with the church that is in their house and also um, well um, yeah, it, it is also possible that they, you know, either they are with him or they could have written to him or they have sent word to him about the church in Corinth. So he is he's saying, you know, they greet you heartily with the church that is in their house. Um, all the brethren greet, greet you, they greet an, another with a holy kiss. It's a you know, cultural thing that was for them to greet in this manner. And in fact, if you see the Middle East, uh, people still, you know, the men still greet other each other in this manner. Um, so he's talking about uh, if anyone does not have the love, uh, does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, let him be um, accursed. Or the word used there is anathema, and in fact, it, in fact, it was a, you know, it was a disciplinary term that was used uh, in those days in the synagogue. You know, when you read about the Jewish customs and they would uh, give warnings for those who were you know indisciplined or those who were sinning openly and those who were rebelling and uh, so this anathema was the 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 third one or the final one of such warnings 
that was uh, issued. So you know, he's he's saying he's using the same word, and he's saying you know, let him be accursed, or so, which means that they are separate, cut off from the life of God, cut off from everything, the life of the church, and so on. Right. So saying, don't love the Lord Jesus. You know, this is this is what it is. The end of that is this. Right. Um, the grace of our Lord be with you, and and he just finishes with with uh, his love and wishes. Right. So that's what we see in chapter uh, fifteen. So any thoughts, any questions, um, any doubts, we could uh, we could look into that. Anything on um, you know on the on First Corinthians also you know any other chapter any other verse that we should look at we could consider that as well. Right? Anything? Any questions? Anything at all? So, uh, so we all know how much time he spent in Corinth with the church, right? He spent about a year and a half. That is what we see, and uh, the issues that the church was going through, right? That is also something that he addresses one after the other, and um, and then you know these are some some of these issues are real challenges, and you know as uh, for the urban. Or, or for the contemporary church, like for the modern day church, we could learn from all this. Right? We can learn from all this, and you see the you know the the life of the church in the life of the church. It's not like you know there are, it is it is perfect. It is uh, you know it is very um, you know we, we see that there are challenges. Right? We see that there are everyday challenges, challenges involving you know everyday life. You know, it's about uh, character. Uh, about marriage, about uh, you know uh, taking, uh, I mean about lawsuits and uh, law and and all those things. So um, about doctrine, about beliefs. So all this happens in a local church. Right? So so for us who are you know maybe the Lord has called us to establish a church, maybe serve in a church. So you see that you know we don't have to be. Uh, you know, we don't have to be discouraged, or we don't have to be taken by surprise when you know, these kind of things are there. Right? This is uh, this happens. It is possible in the life of the church. Right? And uh, yeah, so all these things we can actually uh, preempt, or we can even prepare for, pray, pray through, and address these things. Right? So if if it is there, it needs to be. Addressed in the right manner, so which is what something that we learn also. What is also interesting is how Paul has taught that church, um, the body of believers, in you know one and a half years, eighteen months. Right, he has taught them right from you know, putting faith in Jesus, getting saved, to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, you know entire thing about how to live, how to be a disciple, and also with um, you know the second coming and and thoughts of that. Right, he has taught them all that um, during that short period uh, of one and a half years. So, so that is also something which is um, something that we can learn from, and something that is impressive. Uh, that you know, uh, that when it comes to the church, when it comes to te teaching in the church, we we give the whole counsel of God's word. We give the whole, you know, the. Uh, that when it comes to teaching, don't restrict yourself to, you know, just be expert in one area and then you know just teach that alone. But then uh, everything, you know, everything right from uh, salvation to identity to ministry to uh, you know what they should, uh, how they should conduct themselves in ministry and also the second coming of the Lord and all that. Right. So we we teach them everything. Um, so that they can be strong and they can also do the work of ministry. Right? Okay. Um, any other thoughts? If not, we can actually move to Second uh, Corinthians, right? Yeah. Yeah, Jackin, go ahead, please. 
so pastor so there might be people whom god has given us early uh, when we were growing in the lord and they they have literally helped us so much grow in the lord and after which pastor like the, we might have an encounter with them maybe like not very close encounters but then we see that we cannot have the initial same level of fellowship with them because somewhere they might be lagging or we might not be of the we god might call us to do something else but when we see that literally that those who have helped us are really going downward the spiral we feel in the spirit but they're not willing to take anything from us so how do we deal such fellowship pastor because we really have a heart to help them but uh, i don't know i mean i don't know if i'm saying it correctly but uh, mm. because that 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 fellowship had actually helped you build uh, personally it has been for me so it has like helped me uh, grow in the lord so much but yeah. now I see that there's some false doctrine has really literally entered i don't want to be mm. of what's going on there but it mm. has literally entered and it is causing the others also to go away mm. from the lord but i'm not closely involved right now mm. 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 years that god has brought me away so i was really uh, disturbed that or oh, maybe i didn't contribute or i didn't pray for them enough or like so many thoughts are going on in my mind so is right. there a way that because if i personally involved it's not helping them in any way pastor right. because they're not in a mood to receive or you know right. anything so right. in this way how do we actually uh, is it right for me to involve more or like uh, just step aside and pray for them or like in fact they are coming against me if i tell something fast mm, mm. <laughs> so yeah that, i really have a mm. Mm. expressing so just one some from the scriptures yeah yeah so yeah i mean uh, the lord uh, in that particular season it was a season of you know maybe uh, for you it was a very enriching season uh, the kind of ministry that they did and, and how they ministered to you and also mutual fellowship it just sharpened you in the spirit and so on and so many things happened and you know there was true fellowship but then uh, it was uh, you know you moved on and then things happened and therefore now you know when you go back you find it difficult to connect and and so on it, it's possible but uh, one thing is to not to let go of the love uh, love of god that uh, that is in your heart for them and uh, and i'm assuming it is there for in them also for you so just to be in touch it may not be like how it how it used to be maybe that, that kind of close fellowship may not be there but then one common thing is um, christ the cross salvation you know that is the commonality that is what the common ground is and based on that we can definitely have uh, fellowship you know that is a common thing and yes there could be you know so we need to just really see you know is that difference in doctrine is it something to do with the core thing you know core beliefs or is it something of a peripheral thing obviously even if it's a peripheral secondary uh, you know issue it is going to kind of affect you know affect the affect the relationship in some way or the other but is is it secondary or is it something which is core you know that is something because if it's uh, something to do with the core foundational thing itself then uh, then that's a dangerous place right even for for them you know there's a dangerous place because the the core belief the foundation you know, maybe something to do with the cross something to do with salvation is is shaking um now that that you know then it's a then it's a problem it's a real problem um and it has to be addressed through prayer and uh, you can pray for them intercede for them and also ask god for opportunities and uh and as the opportunities come you know when and it, it it the interaction cannot be confrontational you know that's the thing right uh you know it has to be coming alongside you know, if it's confrontational um then you know it's like uh, you you listen to what i'm saying i'm right and you're wrong and uh, you know that's not going to go do well in most cases right people are not uh, humble enough to receive it right but if it's alongside saying hey let's look at it together uh, you know this is what it says and uh, you know you i know that you're believing this and you're believing this sincerely with all your heart but you know you need to you know to check look at scripture 
right? And this is uh, this is a proof in scripture. So I think you need to uh, you know submit to the authority of God's word, not because I'm saying it. This is what you know it's there in the word. So that would help. Come alongside rather than you know I'm speaking the truth. You are not. Um, you know, you're not following the truth, and you should change. So that might help. And also, God might use other people. You know, so you can you can just uh, you know, put your faith in the Lord, saying God, you know, others who whom they can uh, you know listen to, whom, whom they look up to, whom they can receive from, uh, they can uh, they can receive from there as well. Uh -huh. Maybe you know because they are saying that they helped you in your faith in your early days. It could be that maybe they see you as someone whom they help, whom they nurtured and brought up, and you know now it's like, oh, this person is telling me that I should change or correct. You no, know, that could also be there. So maybe God can use someone whom they look up to, you know, whom they were nurtured when they were, you know, and uh, and they will be in a better place to receive when there is uh, yeah, spiritual input. Yeah. Yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor. It clarified yeah. almost every thought. Yeah, thanks. Okay, right. God bless. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Uh, yes, Nina. Uh, Pastor, you're able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Pastor, just about the First Corinthians three. Uh, yeah. Where it talks about those works, no, I mean, uh, what you build on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Be careful how you build and uh, what you use right. uh, to build the right kind of thing. There is also um, uh, the uh, following verses talk about things to be burnt also, you know, if, if it is yeah. not. You know, so what really is that? referring to i mean uh, works that will not stand uh, mm. under god's judgment so like you know if any little more clarity on that if possible yeah so chapter three right let me just um, yes. uh, pull that out okay um Yeah, okay. Um, share that. Okay. And uh, so, so after talking about division is when he talks about that and how we are called to, I mean, addressing themselves and how they are supposed to build and foundation is the Lord, of course. And uh, when you build, uh, build with the right, build in the right manner. So he's talking about different gold, silver, etc. He's talking about, you know, really the effort and the right way, this right spiritual input that is going to, uh, you know, hold the person, right? that is going to enable the person to really endure and and stand continue to stand so he's talking about that the quality of the building the quality of the building of course in, is in the quality of the material that you use and uh you know in the manner in which you build etc so just figuratively you know, it's talking about uh, when we build people when we minister to people what is the way manner in which you're you think what is the kind of input that you're giving etc so so when it when it says that okay uh, the, the the day will declare it it will be revealed by fire the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is and you know so he's talking about you know maybe you know, tribulation and uh, uh, will will people be able to stand the test of time if will people be able to stand uh, um, endure uh, and uh, you know endure and and Till the right till the end. If if it does not, and uh, and the fire could refer to that as well. You know, it could refer to things that uh, uh, the testing or the trials and the tribulations, and they are not uh, standing because of that. It could also mean that uh, that you know we we did not do a good job with our work. We did not 
you know, we did it in fleshly manner. We did it in a covetous manner. We did it in a way. We ministered in a way that was uh, that was not right. And therefore, the people also, you know, were built on the wrong things. We're built on, you know, maybe the fleshly things, and therefore, it's not it's not standing. And their lives, in a manner, their lives have fallen away. You know, it says works will be burnt. You know, their lives have fallen away. They have not endured. They have not continued on. And so he's just saying, okay, just like how something is burned, you know, it's not, it's not there. Their commitment is not there. Their lives are not. And yes, we know that it is, it is two ways that it depends on people's will and, and uh, you know, their desire to continue and so on. But also, you know, did did we minister in the way we were supposed to? Did we did we do it carnally? Carnally? Did we do it fleshly? Did we? You know, was our motive right, and what our, was our example right, and and in following, you know, our life and example and our, um, you know, motives and so on, you know, and and we being role models, um, are they following the right things? And did we in any way, you know, do and not do a good job, and therefore they have stumbled and fallen? So, yeah. So the fire being destroyed, being burned up, refers to their life. Uh, in a, during the course of time, you know, not not just at the right at the end. Um, uh, during the course of time itself, you know, did they stand? Did their life really measure up? Um, and and also, you know, at that time when the Lord will judge, you know, will will they be found lacking, or will you know, will they will they fall? Will they will they fall even before that? So yeah, so that's uh, those are some things that we can infer from the work being burnt up but he says you know they will you yourself will be saved yeah you've you know you're saved your faith is fine but then you didn't minister in the right manner yeah i hope that uh, helps so anyway. yeah yeah pastor so then we can we conclude i mean these are because it does say that uh, mm. if what he has built survive uh, he will receive his reward if it is burnt up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. So, yeah. is it um, really talking about? Uh, I mean, I mean, these are believers, but mm. who didn't? Okay, the works were not really up to the mark, and so they are going to suffer only loss of reward. Or are we saying that? Uh, you know, when you say talking about the fire, is it talking about judgment? Not really. Yeah. So. Um, so no, no. It is actually talking about the end. Of, yeah, it, it is talking about the end of time for that the person. Day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh. or it could also mean something that happens, you know, during the course of life, um, and they and they don't pursue. You know, they don't endure. They don't go through. So, um, so that is what uh, we can conclude. Um, Verse yeah, thirteen but, is but, saying uh, that the day will bring you to light. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, that is what. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, that is what I was just looking at. So um, that day will declare it, which uh -huh. means that. Uh, yeah. So uh, the the primary reference is till the end of time, and when there is a judgment, uh -huh. uh, and if there and and we know, you know, for a believer, it's a judgment of rewards. So therefore, yes, yeah. With the, yeah. So which means that. Whatever they have done with their life, uh, they have done it maybe in a fleshly manner. But they themselves had their faith in God, but they did it yeah. in a fleshly manner. Therefore, it's talking about rewards, of course. Yeah. So, uh, so because verse I mean, fourteen, yeah, verse fourteen yeah. is very clear. You know, that he will, if if it endures, uh, it he will receive a reward. And so, yeah. yeah so it's talking about the rewards. Uh, of the believer and not losing salvation but, uh, yeah. about the reward yeah yeah okay yeah, just wanted to right. be clear about that so that means the degree of fruitfulness for every believer yeah. i mean as long as that that faith of course but then every i mean even to compare the degree of fruitfulness will always vary isn't it uh, from yes. person to person so yes. we are not going um, so of course we will lose rewards but we don't lose, we will be still saved. Of course, maybe by the skin of our teeth, but we will be mm. saved, so isn't it? We will be saved, we will be saved, of course. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, based on what we did, based on what yes. we did with our call, you know, our faithfulness yeah. to the call, faithfulness mm. to 
you know and and the thing is um, you know did the person let's say you know you have spiritual oversight uh, over a particular and, and because he's referring to himself and the others oh. like him who are ministering to people so he's saying you know um so we are building we need to, uh, Christ is the foundation and we need to be careful how we build so he's actually referring to himself and and he's saying hey we need to we come under a stricter stricter judgment and uh, because our work if it does not you know stand then you know it, we don't get the reward and uh, the person who's yeah so he's talking about himself and the ministry uh, uh, and that god you know uh, god has interested him and if you look at the last uh, couple of verses i mean sorry uh, verse 16 he is talking about you are the temple of god the spirit of god dwells in you so if anyone defiles the temple so here in verse uh, chapter 3 we we see that he's talking to them collectively uh, as the temple you know, collectively the believers as the temple chapter 6 he's talking to them individually as their body being the temple so in chapter 3 collectively as a temple you know you're doing something to defile the temple right which means uh, something of the flesh something carnal and uh, it is affecting them and so by precept and by example it's affecting them and therefore they are the way they live their life it's also you know it's also being affected um and like th through all this you know the bigger picture is that the holy spirit will speak and you know they can they when they be are led by the spirit of course change will happen and so on and you know everything will change um but then when you have direct spiritual oversight and if you are continuing to build in this manner then know that because of they are believing they are you know by precept and principle their life is getting affected the way they are built is getting affected yeah so that's a very sober sobering thought right? yes it is but, but yeah. uh, just wanted to be clear like that i mean so it's right. so important to be building constantly yes building uh, constantly the yeah. right in the right yeah. way also in the right yeah. way yeah building in the right way uh, ministering in the right way um, and it it, yeah. it 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 differs right uh, for different people what god has called them to do maybe it's just one on one maybe it's uh, you know the sphere of influence differs and but then to be faithful right um, yes. so so it's a warning you know, for us to be careful but also we know that the lord will you know is always well able to because uh, he's been he can minister he can change and you know he, uh, uh, course correction everything is possible you know he's a redemptive god so that's the that's a bigger picture but however you know our intention our uh, you know the way in which we need to minister we need to be careful yeah okay, so we'll take a break yeah yeah most welcome we'll take a break and then we'll come back at 10 o'clock right thank you